Hello, my name is Dr. Rashni Madhvani, and in this video I will present findings from our recent paper targeting the late component of the L-type calcium current to suppress early after depolarizations by Rashni Madhvani, Marina Angelini, Luan Feng Zia, Antonius Pantazis, Sylvie Siriani, Niels Borgstrom, Alan Garfinkel, Zeeland Chu, James Weiss, and Ricardo Olcheze. This work was recently published in the Journal of General Physiology. I will begin with a brief introduction of the cardiac action potential. The coordinated activity of ion channels mainly selective for sodium, calcium, and potassium ions generates the cardiac action potential. Upon excitation, the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels drives the membrane potential toward the sodium electrochemical equilibrium potential generating the sharp upstroke of the action potential up to roughly 40 millivolts during phase zero. This depolarization activates L-type calcium and potassium channels. This balance of inward and outward currents results in the plateau phase. During this time, calcium entering the cell triggers calcium release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, resulting in myocyte contraction. Eventually, calcium and voltage-dependent inactivation of the L-type calcium channels allows potassium conductances to dominate and hence repolarize the resting membrane potential in phase 3 and the diastolic state phase 4, during which the myocyte relaxes and is ready for the next oncoming beat. Under certain pathological conditions, the monotonic repolarization of the action potential during phase 2 or 3 is interrupted by a transient depolarization called early after depolarization, or EAD for short. EADs can create heterogeneity of repolarization and premature extrasystoles, triggering arrhythmias with the potential to cause ventricular fibrillation and sudden cardiac death. In Figure 1, we show that the steady state activation and inactivation voltage dependence of the L-type calcium channel bound a range of membrane potentials at which calcium channels are available to reactivate, the so-called window current. The L-type window current is particularly important as it is at these membrane potentials that EADs arise. Within this membrane potential range, the L-type calcium current reactivation plays a key role in reversing the normal repolarization phase during EAD formation. Modification of the L-type calcium channel steady state properties alter the window current, such as a shift of the half activation potential, a reduction of the slope of the activation voltage dependence, or an increase of the non-inactivating pedestal current. The focus of our study was twofold. One, to provide detailed mechanistic insight on the role of the L-type calcium current in EAD formation and two, to identify modifications of L-type calcium current voltage and time-dependent biophysical properties that suppress EADs and their arrhythmogenic consequences. Our findings support the view that subtle modifications of the L-type calcium channel biophysical properties can be the basis of an effective antiarrhythmic therapy. To test the sensitivity of EADs to a large number of biophysical parameters, we need a systematic and efficient method such as the dynamic clamp approach which allows the real-time introduction of a tunable current to the cell. Mimicking oxidative stress conditions by perfusion of hydrogen peroxide induces consistent EADs in current-clamped rabbit ventricular myocytes. We then blocked the native calcium channels with nifedipine. The memory potential of the PACE cell was then input into a computer running the UCLA rabbit ventricular myocyte model by Mahajan et al. This model includes Hodgkin-Huxley type formulations for the L-type calcium channel, the fast sodium channel, the sodium-potassium pump, and the sodium-calcium exchanger, as well as a calcium cycling formulation for discrete cellular compartments. The calculated L-type calcium current is output as current command to the electrophysiological amplifier and injected into the current clamp myocyte, effectively reconstituting the EAD regime. This alters its membrane potential, which is in turn sampled for the next computation. Thus, there is a dynamic bidirectional relationship between the myocyte membrane potential and model conductance output at a sampling frequency of 10 kHz. 
Since the calcium channel conductance is fully parameterized, each aspect of its function can be modified with the touch of a button to systematically explore L-type calcium current modifications that suppress EADs in the constant presence of EAD favoring insults such as hydrogen peroxide or hypokalemia. In Figure 2, a representative experiment shows that reduction of the L-type calcium channel non-inactivating pedestal current can prevent EADs. In the first panel, we show five consecutive action potentials from isolated rabbit ventricular myocytes paced every five seconds at 37 degrees Celsius. Hydrogen peroxide perfusion imposed a consistent EAD regime, while addition of nifedipine blocked the native calcium channels and completely abolished the EADs, in addition to markedly decreasing the action potential duration. At this stage, the dynamic clamp was engaged, injecting a virtual L-type calcium current modeled after calcium current recorded under hydrogen peroxide perfusion, effectively reconstituting the EAD regime. Note that EADs reconstituted by the virtual L-type calcium current appear smaller in amplitude than those observed without dynamic clamp. This can be attributed to the absence of IKS, which is normally activated by the rise in intracellular calcium. Including 10% of calculated IKS in the injected current markedly enhanced EAD amplitude compensating for this effect, as shown in the green inset. Strikingly, we found that reducing the non-inactivating pedestal current of the L-type calcium current from 10% of the peak to 4% was highly effective at abolishing the EAD regime despite the continuous presence of hydrogen peroxide. This finding is quantified in the following figure. Our finding that reducing the L-type calcium current non-inactivating pedestal current is highly effective at suppressing hydrogen peroxide-induced EADs is summarized in figure 3. The zoomed-in area of the L-type calcium channel activation and inactivation curves is shown to clearly demonstrate the pedestal reducing maneuver. Upon pedestal reduction from 10 to 4 percent, EADs were completely prevented. Moreover, the action potential duration was fully restored. Each data point represents an individual cell. The black lines in each plot represent the mean of all experiments. Another set of parameters affecting the L-type calcium current window current region are the steepness of the voltage dependence of activation and inactivation. In Figure 4, we examine the effects of decreasing or increasing the slope factor, K, of the voltage dependence of activation. We found that at greater steepness, EAD amplitudes decreased. At the steepest slope, the APD was prolonged such that in some cases, the action potential failed to repolarize before the next pacing stimulus. On the contrary, when the effective charge of the activation curve was reduced, EAD amplitudes increased. This effect was even more pronounced for a K factor of 8 millivolts, such that the mean EAD amplitude increased up to about 20 millivolts, although no significant changes in percentage of action potentials with EADs were observed, and APD90 remained prolonged for these maneuvers. Manipulating the steepness of steady state inactivation curve also failed to suppress EADs. This result is shown in supplemental figure S1. We next studied the effects of altering the time constant of L-type calcium current activation on EAD formation during oxidative stress, shown in Figure 5. Our results demonstrate that neither speeding up L-type calcium current activation by tenfold nor slowing it down by tenfold could restore the action potential morphology and duration to a normal range. Likewise, we conclude that the time constant of activation of the L-type calcium current has limited potential as a therapeutic target. Similarly, modification of the time constant of inactivation of the L-type calcium current by up to tenfold in either direction, shown in Figure 6, did not restore action potential duration to a normal range, even though EAD suppression was observed for a two-fold decrease of the rate of inactivation. However, since this modification also resulted in long action potentials, which can be highly arrhythmogenic, we did not consider this maneuver to be a favorable antiarrhythmic target. In the online supplement to this article, we are including figures S1, relevance of the L-type calcium current steady state inactivation curve to EADs at action potential duration, figure S2, predicted calcium transient before and after reduction of the L-type calcium current pedestal, 
figure S3, reducing the non-inactivating L-type calcium current pedestal effectively suppresses hypokalemia-induced EADs. Figure S4, reducing the non-inactivating L-type calcium current pedestal is an effective maneuver to suppress simulated hydrogen peroxide-induced EADs in a computer model of rabbit ventricular cell layer types. Back to the main article. Figure 7 summarizes the effects of the various parameter changes on the APD and EAD occurrence, illustrating that three parameter modifications both effectively suppress EADs and restore APD toward a normal value from this and our previous work. A depolarizing shift of the half activation potential, a hyperpolarizing shift of the half inactivation potential, and the reduction of the pedestal current. Other modifications of the L-type calcium current voltage and time-dependent properties, such as the time constant of inactivation or activation, or the steepness of the voltage dependence of inactivation or activation, were not effective at preventing EADs or restoring the action potential duration. The L-type calcium channel is an excellent therapeutic target to suppress early after depolarizations and their arrhythmogenic consequences. EAD occurrence sharply depends on the L-type calcium current biophysical properties that shape the window current region, specifically the voltage dependence of activation, voltage dependence of inactivation, and the non-inactivating component. Therefore, we conclude that EAD emergence can be controlled by the minimal perturbation of these properties. It was a great privilege to publish this work at the Journal of General Physiology, and we were very grateful for the insightful commentary by Drs. Markandeya and Camp. Once again, I am Dr. Roshni Madhvani from the Olcheza Laboratory at UCLA. We are grateful to the NIH, the American Heart Association, and the Laubish and Kawada Endowments for financial support, and thank you very much for watching.